Hello and welcome to another episode of the Animation Archives. And in this episode I will be discussing the cult favourite anime TV series, Death Note. This is going to be a showcase much like the Avatar episode, so don't worry, no spoilers. Like many Japanese animated shows, Death Note started life as a manga series which ran from 2003 to 2006 and was written by Tsugumi Uba. The manga was very well received and was specifically praised for its characters and tense storytelling. Studio Madhouse took on the challenge of adapting this popular series. Both the manga and the animated TV show have built a cult following over the years and has also managed to get banned in certain regions of China because apparently it misleads innocent children and distorts their mind and spirit. Hmm. Death Note centres around the character of Light, a high school student who is extraordinarily gifted and is among the brightest young minds in Japan. One day he stumbles on a notebook and on the inside cover it reads The human whose name is written in this notebook shall die. This note will not take effect unless the writer has the person's face in their mind when writing his or her name. Therefore, people sharing the same name will not be affected. If the cause of death is written within 40 seconds of writing the person's name, it will happen. If the cause of death is not specified, the person will simply die of a heart attack. After writing the cause of death, details of the death should be written in the next 6 minutes and 40 seconds. At first, Light reacts like anyone would. This is just a joke, a silly little prank someone cooked up. But after testing it, out of curiosity, he has to come to terms with the fact that not only is the Death Note the real deal, but he had become a murderer. It turns out that this notebook belongs to a Shinigami, a god of death, called Ryuk, who deliberately dropped the notebook into the human world just because he was bored. Light then quickly comes up with a plan to use the notebook to try and make the world a better place. He figures that if he uses the notebook to kill off criminals, the world will be a much more peaceful and happier place for those who are decent, law-abiding citizens. Every criminal he kills dies of a heart attack. This is to ensure people of the world notice a pattern and know that someone is out there dishing out divine retribution. And the world came to call this someone Kira. All the major law enforcement agencies around the world know that there is something going on, but can't prove it. And so they task the master detective, known only as L, to figure out who Kira is and then bring him to justice. But I assure you, L is real. I do exist. Now, try to kill me. You, you bastard. What the hell is going on? on right He's really taking this too far. Are you trying to kill yourself, Elle? What's going on? Look, it's Kira versus Elle. A live broadcast of killing? Oh, this is freaky. Amazing. Do it, Kira! Someone stop this. Can't you do it? If a setup like that, you'd think Death Note would be rich with discussions about the human condition and exploring the moral questions that come up when you give a single person that much power. But to be honest, while Death Note certainly touches on that stuff, it isn't really the focus. Death Note is a game of chess between two master players, and it's fascinating as an audience member to watch the moves each player makes. One of Death Note's greatest strengths is that the fictional world in which the story takes place has very clearly defined limitations. Over the first few episodes of the series, Ryuk explains a few things about the Notebook and the Shinigami, such as... The Notebook becomes part of the human realm from the very moment it touches the Earth. In other words, the Notebook is now yours. This is mine? If you don't want it, just give it to someone else. But if you give it away, I'd have no choice but to erase your memories of the notebook. And... I'd be careful if I were you. If anyone else touches that notebook you've got hidden in the drawer right now, they'll be able to see me too. <laughs> once this information is established, the creators never once break their own logic. 
It's incredibly impressive how they are able to use these very strict set of rules to create very interesting and tense situations for all the characters. It's very smartly written, and because Light and L always come up with plans using information that is readily available to the audience, it makes the viewer believe these two are very smart individuals, rather than just superhumans who can pull Deus Ex Machina after Deus Ex Machina out of their own asses. No, wait, maybe I'm wrong. This is exactly what I've been thinking about lately. This world is rotting, and those who are making it rot deserve to die. Someone has to do it, so why not me? Even if it means sacrificing my own mind and soul, it's worth it. Because the world can't go on like this. Light is a fascinating character that I would absolutely loathe if I met in real life. He is incredibly intelligent, more so than anyone could reasonably expect from a high schooler, but despite his great intellect, his views on morality are shockingly immature. Maybe people are afraid to say it out loud, but they all understand what's happening. Someone's making the bad guys disappear one by one. Those who have done no wrong are cheering for Kira in their hearts because they have nothing to fear, while those who have done wrong are on the run. They're forced to hide from an unknown enemy. This is how it should be. He lives in a world of black and white where people are either good or they are evil. I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir when I say the world simply isn't that clear cut. People will often do terrible things out of fear and desperation and not with any malicious intent. So Light's stance that all criminals must die is hard to get behind even when you realise that Kira's influence might actually be helping a lot of people. The only thing larger than Light's intellect is his ego. He starts to see himself as a god, someone above the rest of society and above the kind of judgement he dishes out on others. As the old saying goes, absolute power corrupts absolutely, and much of what makes Light's journey so interesting is watching this process take place. If I had one issue with Light, it would be his English voice actor. In the early episodes, Brad Swale tries much too hard, and often sounds like he's taking a dump when delivering his lines. There's no reason for me to be worried. After all, this is proof that they don't have anything on me yet. So this whole thing is nothing more than a contest between Al and me. Thankfully, he calms down a bit as the series progresses, but if you'd rather avoid the awkwardness of the early episodes, you can't go wrong with the original Japanese audio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh. I am L. Stop me if you've heard this one before. A consulting detective who is brought on to only the most difficult of cases by the police, a genius at deduction who may or may not be suffering from some kind of autism or Asperger's. I know you're an army doctor and you've been invalided home from Afghanistan. I know you've got a brother who's worried about you, but you won't go to him for help because you don't approve of him, possibly because he's an alcoholic, more likely because he recently walked out on his wife. And I know that your therapist thinks you're limp psychosomatic, quite correctly, I'm afraid. It's enough to be going on with, don't you think? The name's Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street. Afternoon. Yep. In many ways, L is a new take on the Sherlock Holmes character. That said, this isn't a mere copy and paste job. L has enough unique qualities to make him stand out on his own. L is a light equal when it comes to intelligence, but is a much more awkward individual, lacking light's charisma and social skills. While L will continually claim that he wants to track down Kira for the good of the world, it becomes increasingly apparent that L has little to no real concern about other people's lives unless it is those closest to him. All L cares about is the game, solving the intricate puzzle that has been laid before him. As the series progresses, L starts to make 
morally questionable decisions to help gather evidence he needs to catch Kira. These kinds of decisions start to upset and push away the men he relies on to try and solve this case. Unlike Light, the English voiceover for Elle is fantastic. Alexandro Giuliani, who you may recognise from the new Battlestar Galactica as Gator, does a great job of conveying Elle's intelligence and delivers his lines with a very relaxed and natural fashion, which is rare for anime. No. These aren't acts of God, but someone very childish and immature who wants to pretend they're God. That's what's going on here. A mass murderer who calls himself Kira exists somewhere. I'm sure of it, and I will catch him. But I can't count on Kira making any mistakes. It doesn't matter how long we watch him, he's not going to expose himself to us. So what should I do? Death Note isn't a perfect show, it has its issues. One prominent one for me is the show's attitude towards women. I would never claim that Death Note is outright misogynist, but there are a couple of scenes that hint that the creators might have some less than progressive views. There are certainly some interesting female characters in the show, but my opinion of the creators' attitudes isn't helped by this terrible character being the only female we engage with on a regular basis. Would you please make me your girlfriend? Then do you mind if I call you Knight instead? Cause you're like my knight in shining armor, you know? You have to go on a date with me at least once a week! I do get that Misa Misa on some level is supposed to be annoying, but when Light and L are so well written, questions start popping into my head when Misa Misa shows up. Even if there is no intentional sexism at play here, I still think Misa Misa is largely an unsuccessful character and one of the things that stuck out like a sore thumb when watching this series for a second time. I'm not going to leave this video on a negative note though, as I feel the positive aspects of the show do far outweigh the negative stuff. It should be apparent by now that both the art and the soundtrack for this show are great. The story takes some twists and turns you will not see coming, and the way the show wraps up in the end is really satisfying. If any of what I've said interests you, seek this show out, because it is one of the more cleverly written animated shows out there. Just don't watch the crappy movies.